our nervous systems are constantly falling in love with the chase, the push and pull, the, the looming fear of someone wanting and then leaving us, the sense that someone temporarily satisfies us. They fall in love with the heightened feelings of abandonment because that's what we're used to. Now, when you fall in love, and so typically what happens here is, and this is an expression of most of my clientele, they'll say, well, this guy is so boring or the sex with this guy is so plain or the sex with somebody else is so thing. I'm not getting excited. Yeah, it's, I really want those bad boys. I know, right? Those bad boys are like so stimulating. They feel so good. The sex with them is incredible. And here's another fact for you. Sex is one of the fastest ways for your nervous system to feel stimulation and for your heart to feel a temporary sense of validation. Do you know why? Because sex is physical. So the moment you get into a physical sense of contact with this person, your body naturally feels a sense of oxytocin because that's what happens when human beings get in touch physically. And when you feel that sense of oxytocin temporarily, it can um, mis mislead or misguide your mind into thinking, wow, I feel really good with this person. They must be really good for me. That's wrong. Which is why the second thing I want you to write down for yourself, if you have a stronger sense of anxiety, rejection, or abandonment that you experience in your relationships, you must have a five to seven date sex, no sex rule. This is just from my heart to yours, because I have this, I had this for myself for sure. And it's what definitely helped me establish until that point, is this relationship going to give me a sense of safety? Because then after that point, it's more likely that this relationship will sustain. Whereas what happens if we jump into having sex on the first date or the first three dates is that we actually abandon ourselves. We settle for the false promises that we think we're getting from somebody else or the false sense of love and validation, security, safety that they're going to give us in the first three dates. And the moment you have sex, after that, they're going to be like, okay, adios, bye-bye, and they're gone. On the, on the other end also, what tends to happen is that if we've been abandoned before and we're so afraid, then we'll get overly celibate or stay away from relationships and connection too, because we're so afraid of being abandoned, right? So it makes sense. Like, why should I open up my heart and my vulnerability because the and my body? Because the last time, last five times I did it, I was broken up and I was abandoned and I was hurt. So the best part is not for the pendulum to be on either end of the spectrum, where we either completely self-abandoned by getting physical or we self-abandoned by not trusting. We have to get into the middle. That's where love really lies. So as we start this, I really noticed this for myself because I was just like many of you, where the best sex I ever had was with the women who are not good for me. And this is this I can put to you in my blood. And it was so amazing that it made me feel like we were like these. I've heard this concept of twin flames. Oh my God. I was like, oh my God, here's my twin flame. And this is my soulmate. And this person's gonna like draw me and we're gonna have an amazing life. And at the end of the day, it always led with heartbreak, abandonment, rejection, any of those things. After I discovered that this was a pattern that I was getting into, I recognized that clearly, Yats, you're sabotaging yourself by getting into these relationships just so you can continue your old story. What is my old story? I want you to write this down also because your nervous system patterning equals old story. I just want you guys to write this down for yourself so that you know this is true. I recognized that I am seeking a love that abandons me because that's the only love I was used to. So why not retrain myself to get used to a different kind of love, which means retrain my nervous system to be used to a different kind of love. So I started to create safety. I started to create um, security, more love within, regulating my nervous system, seeking more peace rather than seeking stimulation, seeking more quietness within rather than seeking, seeking some kind of like external validation. And as you do that, you fall in love with safety and security. The most important need for the feminine to thrive is a sense of safety. And yet, when we're wounded in our relationships, the most important thing that the feminine doesn't get from relationships that are not um, balanced or safe or healthy is the lack of safety. If you learn to fall in love with safety and create safety within your nervous system, you will fall in love with safety externally, which means safety is what will stimulate your nervous system to have and feel love, to feel a great sense of connection and sex and, and, and sensuality. You will feel it with safety rather than feel it with what abandons you. And that really is the principle of how you retrain yourself on what are the ideas of a healthier love. Learning to create a healthier idea of love for ourselves within our nervous systems, when we start to do that internally, 
the love that you're used to is the love that you will seek. This is the law of your nervous system. Because what your nervous system, and this is a great question, Stephanie said, how do we start creating safety? This is what this workshop is about, like to teach you a little bit more about that. And then, like I said, if you want to dive deeper into more of the practice work, you can always reach out to us, let us know. If your nervous system is used to an idea of abandonment, rejection, people not showing up for you, your needs not being validated, betrayal, whatever else that leaves its mark, you will unconsciously learn to seek that because that is what you're used to. And listen to my words. I said unconsciously or subconsciously, that is what you will seek. Because for sure, I've been in this conversation from so many times with people, they're like, but I want this love. Yes, I want the good guy. I'm going to a good place. And, you know, I'm going to only church to look for guys. I'm only going to go here. Trust me, your subconscious is so powerful that it will and you'll go through all the weeds of the great people and find the one person who learns how to abandon you because that's the only thing that it's used to. That's the only thing your subconscious, your nervous system knows in how to connect with love. So what you're here to do in this session and what you will always, always do with me is not learn how to earn somebody else's love. That will be a guarantee if you can learn to create that idea of that love within yourself. So here's a journaling prompt I want you to take for, at the end of the day, if you have time today, later in the evening, you're sitting with a cup of coffee, under the moonlight, whatever it is to write for yourself. What is an idea of love that I want to have, that I want to create? Now, most of us, when we write this, immediately our mind will go to the external. I want a partner who's like this. I want a partner who does that. Don't think of it that way. Think of it as, I want a love that's safe. I want a love that's grounded. I want a love that respects me. I want a love that prioritizes me. I want a love that understands my needs. I want a love that X, Y, Z, whatever that is, I want you to journal that and to define that, to create this idea for yourself. The love that we attract from other people, right? Which tends to be the rejection, the abandonment, everything else, unconsciously is also the kind of love we give ourselves. And you may think that this is not true because your ego and your mind, and your ego, by the way, is not the cocky, defensive side of you. That's only one way the ego shows up. Your ego is basically an old protective identity of you. It's the part of you that creates your old patterns. It's the part of you that creates your old, like, um, you know, your old defense mechanisms. It's what you learn of yourself. So you can be your, if you're a people pleaser, that's your ego, by the way, because that's your survival program. If you're a victim, that's also your ego. If you're someone who is like, as we say, cocky, or overconfident, that's also your ego. It's how you survive in your environments. But anyway, coming back here, your ego may not let you see this, but the abandonment that other people give us is actually unconsciously the abandonment we create for ourselves. There are moments in our life, if we evaluate them, we will see, shit, I put myself in that difficult position. That's me abandoning myself. Shit, I chose that person's needs over myself. That is me unconsciously rejecting myself. Shit, when I look back, those red flags were waving in my face, but the sex was so great, I just had to continue with it. That's again, me abandoning myself or invalidating my needs. The reason I'm saying this to you is because you're not here to learn how to push James, Jack, Johnson, Mary, whoever, to learn to love you. You're here to be the love, to emanate it, to understand it, to radiate it within yourself, because then it is impossible for Mary, James, Jack, John, whoever else is out there, not to love you. It's impossible for the world to not love you when the love that you are giving yourself and your nervous system now becomes a part of your being. Are you hurting from shame, loneliness, toxic relationships? Do you want to break that pattern and create a beautiful, loving life for yourself? Well, my name is Yats, and I'm an inner work and relationship guru. And I have helped thousands of women and men from all around the world learn to become their best selves and have the lives that they truly want and desire. This channel was designed for you to be able to heal those old wounds, be able to become and elevate your best self, and to you to love your life, really, that you have right now. And I offer an eight-week program called The Gauntlet, which takes you on this amazing journey of healing those wounds. And I also offer in-person live retreats all around the world where you can access that same level of healing and empowerment. I want you to do something for you today. I want you to watch some of these videos. And if these videos hit close to home, they resonate with you and they're giving you some inspiration, then I want you to subscribe and share it with somebody else who needs it. These videos aren't just for someone to consume. They're meant to inspire people to take action. And if you want to take action in your own life, jump in the comments, watch the videos, send me a DM.
DM at the inner yats on Instagram and I'll see you in the next video.